You know what you should do? You should follow me on Twitter at Bromo018. Link in the description. Do it now. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 40 of the Ajax career mode on FIFA 19 with me Bromo18 as always delighted for all of you to be joining me today in what is essentially a review of season 2 um you know we did this in season 1 it went down quite well so um you know we're going to do it again looking ahead um I guess because um you know I'm going to announce here and now that we are going to be carrying on into season three with Ajax. There's been a lot of talk about it in the comments, but I think, you know, it seems only right. Of course, we um, we didn't get a treble for one, and we also lost in the final of a Champions League. So, um, you know, there is, a, there is a part of me that thinks, you know, can we go a step further? Can we, you know, do more? Um, and, I've, you know, that's what we're, that's what we're going to aim for. That's what we're going to aim for. The series has gone down really well, so I think, why not? Let's go on. For uh, for a third season, I've really enjoyed it. So um, you know, I hope you guys have too. Um, uh, I'm guessing so because, of course, there are you know plenty of people still watching this. So we're going to go ahead um, into a third season. I'm really looking forward to it, and I hope that you'll all join me. Can we go one step further in that? You know, we won the league this season, and last, um, you know, can we get a double, get a treble, finally win the Champions League, which of course we lost that in the final, um, as these news tabs are keen to point out to me. So, um, yeah, but in today's episode, there's going to be, you know, we're sort of going to look back on um, the likes of the League, Champions League, Cup, etc. Uh, we're also going to talk about, you know, potential transfers in the future. There's been a little bit of movement on that front uh, that we are going to talk about. We're also going to talk about contracts, a couple of players running out of contracts this season and next. I'm uh, going to discuss uh, sort of the, uh, the implications of that, what, you know, there's going to be movement on that front as well. So we're going to go into that um, and some other things as well. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you uh, you guys enjoyed this episode. First of all, let's let's have a, just a, a brief talk, really, about what went on this season, of course, in the league. It was a foregone conclusion, really, from start to finish. We played so, so well um, throughout the league season. Two of the losses really came from us simming the games the only one loss that we actually had was in January. It wasn't beaten up until that point. It was against Feyenoord. I remember, you know, being a bit flat after that game, disappointed because we really felt like um, that we were going to go on and, and, you know, cause an unbeaten record, you know, create an unbeaten record for the season. Uh, that This was the game actually where we lost. Coming off the back of a comprehensive winner as well against Addo Den Haag, you know, we felt really, um, really up for it and it just wasn't to be. You know, considering the the start of the season as well, which we've which we've spoken about, we started off so well, beating PSV, beating Groningen. We had this mad game against AZ Alkmaar where we won six nil, um, and we were just on absolute fire, barely conceding a goal as well. We'd of course qualified for the Champions League after beating Victoria Pilsen, so um, you know we felt really good for it. But in the end, we did lose out, but still won the league by a monumental um, amount of points. If we have a look here, 91 we finished on, then PSV on 76, 15 points difference. That is pretty, pretty impressive. And then after that, you've got Groningen in third, who uh, finished on 64. So for the Champions League places, we were well ahead, almost 30 points ahead. Um, so we were, you know, very comfortable. Final just about got themselves into Europa League spot. Um, AZ falling just short of that. Vitesse ended up falling off the way so quite a bit. They were up there at the start of the season, but just fell off. Heron Vane as well. Um, they've actually been taken over by, um, you know, Rich Owner. I forgot to show you guys that uh, that news article, but, you know, they've got a lot of money to spend um, and in the first season, hasn't worked out for them. You know, expect big moves from them in the summer, that's for sure, with all that money uh, to throw around. But, um, you know, we'll see what they do. For now, though, they, uh, they are looking disappointed. But, yeah. League season, absolutely, uh, you know, couldn't have asked for much more other than an unbeaten record. So really pleased uh, with how that went. Then we move on to uh, to the Cup and obviously in the end it was a bit of a heartbreaking. I think it was after extra time actually that we lost. I swear it, it was 1-1 at full time and went to extra time and then conceded, which was a real shame. You know, against final as well, it was a, it was a bit of pill to swallow. 
We had um, we had a, quite a tough run actually. Of course, Vitesse in the opening round, and FC Utrecht uh, semi-finals. Can't remember who we had in the semi-finals. I think it was PSV. So um, obviously the game is gonna try and there it was PSV four three in the end. It finished that one definitely went to extra time. So we had a real tough run compared to Feyenoord, who had you know Fortuna Sittard, AZ Alkmaar, and Hedda Klez. So um, you know we we. Could have felt a bit hard done by, but we we take any team. We of course reached the final, and it just wasn't to be. You know, we we thought that the treble might have been on because at the time we were on brilliant form, but um, lose out unfortunately, lose out in the final. Uh, hopefully next season we can go that one step further. We did win it in the first season, so um, you know that that was uh, that was disappointing that we couldn't retain our title in the second season. But nevertheless, you know a, a good. A good run. Impressive. Want to go that one step further. We'll see how it goes next season, but for sure, something to build on. Uh, and then finally, which of course featured heavily in the last episode as we played the final, we do have the uh, the Champions League. And, um, you know, I made no secret of it that we, um, we, we, we won in the first. You know, I played it, uh, won the game, and then the file got corrupted, the video file... And then, you know, I couldn't, I had to go again. And then obviously we lost the second bit. So that was really frustrating. You know, I felt real hard done by by that. Especially after the first one, that, the one that I'd originally recorded that got corrupted was just such a good episode. Um, brilliant moments in it. And it wasn't to be. So I felt hard done by, especially considering the incredibly tough run we had as well. Um, in the, uh, it, right the way throughout. Obviously had to qualify in, in the playoffs as well which made it even tougher. A lot added two more games to our fixture list. So there was a lot to um, there was a lot to overcome. We did really well though. Performed way above expectations. Much like I acts are doing in real life actually. Of course, as of recording this through to the semi-finals, could go one step further. They've got Spurs in that. We'll see how that one goes. But um, yeah, same with us really beating really good teams, overcoming the odds and um, you know, achieving beyond what people expected of us in the end. The final was one step too far, but um, there's something to build on. And hopefully, you know, we don't get sort of pulled apart too much in transfer window. We, we'll talk about that shortly because um, I think with this team, with, uh, with growth of some players and a couple of additions, we can really be a formidable force. And that's, uh, that's certainly something to look at too. I've sort of alluded it to it then and we might as well talk about it now transfer season first of all we'll talk about we'll talk about outgoings i think uh, i have spoke about it previously i expect there to be big offers for the likes of de jong for ziek for david neres for talia fico big players key players and um, you know highest rated players so we'll see how that goes but you know if we do get great offers, this is a realistic career mode. Don't forget, guys. You know, I've been realistic all the way throughout. Ajax have proven time and time again they will try to be successful while still making a lot of money on players and bedding in new ones. You know, Frankie de Jong in real life, he goes for, for 65 million, rising to a lot more. Um, and they're, they're fine to do that because they believe they can make a lot of money on him and then bring in someone um, from the youth academy or someone for very cheap. Who can, who can fill that role and they made a lot of money and they can keep doing it that way. They would ideally like to keep their best players but it's not always the case. You know, things money does talk sometimes and, um, you know, it'll be the same in this career mode. People have been sort of a bit disappointed in, in how we've done that. Of course, we sold the lit for 100 million. I didn't need to but again, it's a realistic career mode and that is the way Ajax have always done things. So, we want to keep it that way. We want to see if we can not spend loads of money um, and you know use our youth academy and bed, bed in young players and, and bring them through and if and if our key players get sold for a lot of money then then so be it you know that's the way it will go hopefully clubs just don't bid enough don't forget I'm not just going to sell them for any price you know it's going to cost big money realistic money you know Frankie De Jong in real life he goes for 65 million I want at least 65 million Maybe more because in this, of course, he's grown to an 87. He's grown to a phenomenal rate. And um, he's just an incredible player now. Same with Hakim Ziyech, same with David Neres, same with Anano. I want big money if clubs are going to come in uh, and bid for our players. So, you know, they better, they best be prepared 
um, to uh, to put their money where their mouth is, so to speak, and and you know, um, give us give us reasonable offers. So yeah, we'll see how that one goes. Hopefully, we don't get pulled apart too much because there's just a brilliant core to this side, and um, I've absolutely loved playing with it. And I think we could go on and do brilliant things if um, if we can we can keep the club and and the players together generally. So yeah, there's um, there's something on that front. In terms of incomings. There are a couple of players I'm keeping my eye on. Um, so these ones on the list are ones that have generally been suggested to me. Of course, we tried to sign Vandenberg in the summer for cheap. We could go in for him again. We'll see how that one goes. Um, Raz van Marin, uh, Martin Odegaard and Jasper Sillerson are three that have come in heavily suggested in the comment section. Um, these are all players that have been linked in real life, really. Raz van Marin has, uh, has already signed for Ajax, I believe, so... Keeping a close eye on him. He's actually rated really well. He looks really good. Four star, four star. And look how all rounded he is. The only defending is uh, is a yellow stat. And he's not too bad in that in uh, in that way either, to be fair. He looks a really good player. And I think that is a realistic proposition for us. Um, you know, depending on, on what goes. Martin Erdegaard, the problem I said was the stamina. His stamina isn't quite as bad as what I thought. You know, in mid 60s, okay, it could be better. But um, we could work with that. We'll see, though. I'm not paying him £100,000 a week. You know, as he sees wage there, he'll have to take a massive wage cut if I want to bring him in 70 80%. Because I'm not paying him anywhere near that amount of money. So we'll see how that one goes anyway. Um, but should, again, we get pulled apart, we might um, we might bring him in. So we'll see how that one goes. Jasper Sillerson, again... Really good keeper, but the question is, do I want to get rid of Anana? You know, I've been so critical of Anana, but there's just something about him that just makes me want to keep him. I don't know what it is. His rating for one is because he's 85. It just makes you think he shouldn't be bad. So why why is this sort of a problem? Maybe it's just a FIFA thing, and the keepers in general on FIFA are you know disappointing. That is highly likely to be fair, but we'll see. You know, we'll see. I think. Um, He's more than good enough to be in this side. I mean, look at his stats. He's, they're really good. So, I don't know. We'll see how that one goes. I swear, keep the suggestions coming in. I'll, I'll have my um, my own players that I look at, of course. Um, if we look at, I don't know, first team quality and promising, for example. Oh, wow, that's there should be more than that. That's really strange. But, um, yeah, we'll go on to this one instead, the main tab. But, um, yeah, like I say, there's, there's plenty of players that I look at and find and, you know, perhaps bring in couple have been been in the squad see how that one goes Pion Sisto is one that could potentially come in um, that we could that we could look at there's loads there's loads of players and and for sure I think we can um, we can certainly have a look and have a browse and see uh, see what comes up that's for sure but yeah so transfer window I expect it to be fairly busy actually so we'll see how that one goes excuse me I don't want to quit uh, and then now we'll move on to the contract situation there's a little bit of movement on that front, actually. If we go here, uh, you'll see there's a couple of players who are about to run out and they contract. Vlakov Czerny, I believe we're going to let him go. Just hasn't quite made the cut here. Um, you know, perhaps if we'd have invested more in him, we, he could have grown more, probably would have. But, um, you know, it just wasn't to be. Daily Singraven, we are going to renegotiate his deal and try and bring him back. Really like him as a player. Certainly a good rotation option, uh, filling in for Talia Fico so often and then here we got five players on one year you know just over a year to go and I think we're going to try and renegotiate their deals as well Anana, Mats Rari and Ziek are the three that I'm going to look at Cassian and Van Lee are not sure about that they've got to prove themselves in the next season but but for sure these three certainly ones we're going to have uh, we're going to have a look at uh, before the before the new season starts and, and try and renegotiate a deal they're going to ask for a lot of money I can see it coming because their ratings have have grown up substantially but um, you know, we'll see how that one goes for sure. We are gonna uh, we are gonna try to, um, to to bring them back. So we'll see how that one goes um, as well. Meanwhile, for the uh, the squad themselves, looking at thinking of the likes of the young players. I did promote this Ewan Kelly, by the way. He's okay. Five star weak foot, three star skill moves, certainly certainly good. Uh, maybe a holding midfielder, but we do have um, you know we do have Mike Peters. So we'll see how. See how he progresses as well elsewhere. The likes of Price. Probably going to loan him out, actually. Um, really wish I didn't scout in England, to be honest. That sort of put me off a little bit. Uh, Voss is another one. 
Uh, we've tried to invest in him. Of course, gave him a couple of opportunities this season. He played fine. We'll see how that one goes. And just put off by his, his weak foot, his skill, and his work rate. You know, you expect more. You expect better. It's just disappointing. Mike Mulder is one I think we're um, we're going to loan him out. To be honest, he doesn't have what I mean. Look, one star skill move. It's just horrendous. So you know, can't see him progressing that much. Uh, there's a couple here that really have deserved more chances. Callum Iting, you know, Nissan Christensen. These players don't really get much opportunities, but they could be good. But it's just one of them. You know, we have got such quality players. You know, um, it's hard to try and fit them in. Pear Scherz is one that I'm surprised I haven't given more of an opportunity, to be honest. He'll grow, uh, and he's a good player as well. Again, we've got Fossi Mensa Van Drongelen, who have just steered the way up front, but I think Scherz next season will get more opportunities. Um, we might try and fiddle around with the formation as well. We're going to stick stick with our 4 3, 3 of course, but then add another one as well. The 3 4 3 started off really well, but towards the second half of the season, we use it a lot less because it just, it was just something about it. It just wasn't working quite well, so maybe... We'll have a little tweak of that. Maybe we'll add another formation as well, just to keep things interesting. Maybe uh, bring in, help to bring in some other players as well from from you know rotation purposes and so on and so forth. We'll see how that one goes for sure. Uh, Moran Boadu, another one I'd like to point out. He's um, only 19 and he's growing and he looks really good and he needs more game time now. So we're going to give him more. I'd like to try and think about a 4-4-2, but there's just something sort of puts me off. I think it. You know, it does sort of lend itself to not control the game quite as well as you would in a 4-3-3 because, of course, you lose that extra midfield man. So, um, yeah, we're going to see how that goes. But I'd love to be able to try and get Paulson and Boadu in a team together somehow. So we'll see. Um, we'll see if we can try and work something out there. But, yeah, certainly keep an eye on Mar and Boadu because that guy, um, I think, is going he's gonna to grow into a really good player. Um, and... Yeah, that's it really, guys. I think we've sort of covered all of the bases, really. Youth Academy, we'll have another quick look at that. It's very thin now. Um, only Jan Brower from the old guard left. These two are, are recently just been signed this month uh, with the new um, the new youth scouts. So, um, yeah, we're going to see how that one goes. Try and try and bed in as many people as we can. Really looking forward to seeing if this Jan Brower can actually, um, you know, be promoted and, and be a part of the team if he's good enough or not so we'll see how that one goes but um yeah what i do want to know is guys though throwing it to you let me know um a lot of people have been saying they've started an arts career mode so i'd like to know in the comment section how are your arts career modes going what you know where, what point are you in in the career are you a few years in have you just started who have you signed who have you sold what formations are you playing who has been sort of a hidden gem in the squad are there players that i might not be playing who um who have happened to be really good for you, you know, let me know. I'm really interested, you know, to hear these, these sort of stories about Ajax career modes that you've started. I think not only this series, but also just the fact that Ajax have been so good in the Champions League this season. It's really inspired a lot of people to um, to start career modes with Ajax, and uh, that's great to see. So, yeah, let me know in the comment section about those saves and, um, you know, give me give me any little bits of information. I'll, uh, I'll really appreciate that. But um, I think we are... Going to round this off there. It was a season review of number two. And we will go into season three. That is for sure. Really looking forward to seeing how that pans out. And I hope you guys will all join me along the way for it. It's going to be an exciting one. Hopefully, that is for sure. But for now, we are going to round it off there. If you've enjoyed this video, then do be sure to leave a like. And also subscribe to the channel for more regular gaming content. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter using the Twitter handle at Bromo018. The link for that is in the description. And on that note, I'm Bromo18, and I'll see you soon. Come on.